Welcome to Philosophy Tube. My name is. Um. Throughout the course of any given day, you will use names a lot. And by names, I mean proper nouns like Ollie, Finn and Jake, Barack Obama, New Zealand. But what do they really mean? Famous British philosopher, mathematician, and pipe smoker Bertrand Russell thought that names were just shorthand ways of saying descriptions of things, and that's a pretty intuitive idea. I say Tom Hanks, you say what does that mean, I say the guy who was in Forrest Gump. The name means the same thing as the description, it's just a shorter way of saying it. We don't have time to go into exactly why Russell thought that, but let's examine that for a second. Let's start from the hypothesis, Tom Hanks means the guy who was in Forrest Gump. It's possible to imagine a scenario in which Tom Hanks never got the role of Forrest Gump. Imagine the role went to somebody else instead, say, Jeff Goldblum. If Tom Hanks means the guy who was in Forrest Gump, and Jeff Goldblum was in Forrest Gump, then Jeff Goldblum would be Tom Hanks. And if Jeff Goldblum is Tom Hanks, Tom Hanks can't be Tom Hanks. Now yes, okay, Jeff Goldblum wasn't in that movie in real life, but according to this theory, it is at least possible that Tom Hanks could not be himself, which is clearly silly. Let's see if we can salvage descriptive theory by dialing it back a little. For any object, there will be multiple descriptions of it available. Take Tom Hanks, he's not just the guy from Forrest Gump, he's also the guy from Philadelphia, and Toy Story, and Big, and Polar Express, and all these other films. There are multiple descriptions of Tom Hanks available. So what if we say that the name Tom Hanks means the individual who matches most of this family of descriptions? Not all, remember, because a couple of them could actually apply to Jeff Goldblum, but whichever individual meets most of these standards, that must be Tom Hanks. But isn't it possible that Tom Hanks could just not match any of these descriptions? What if he'd never played any of those roles? What if they were all Jeff Goldblum? That still wouldn't make Jeff Goldblum Tom Hanks, or Tom Hanks any less himself. <laughs> so this family of descriptions idea isn't going to work either. One last attempt might be to say that there are certain properties that are essential to being Tom Hanks. Without these properties, he wouldn't be Tom Hanks. The name Tom Hanks means whichever individual has these essential properties, so long as nobody else has those essential properties as well. Okay then, so what are the essential properties of something? In Hanks' case you might say he's an actor, he's American, he was born in 1956... But isn't it possible that Tom Hanks could have been born in a different time and place, or never gone into acting at all? What if he'd become a stockbroker, or a butcher, or joined the army? It would have been a very different life for him, sure, but it would still be the same guy. One interesting thing to debate would be whether or not it's an essential property of Tom Hanks that he was born male. Obviously, if he had gender reassignment surgery now, we'd say it was still the same individual, but what if Tom had been born Tammy? Would we say that's just a world in which Tom Hanks had never been born? Even if we do agree that it's an essential property of Tom Hanks that he was born male, that doesn't really get us very far, since, you know, lots of people are born male. You might also say that it's an essential property of Tom Hanks that he was born a human being, in which case we've started to build a list of essential properties, but they're still pretty vague. All of which still leaves open the question, when I say, oh hey look, it's Tom Hanks, what the hell am I saying? What do you guys think? What do names mean? Is there such thing as an essential property of something that determines what its name should be? Let me know what you think in the comments. You can also tell me whether you'd like the next episode to be about should we be vegetarian or should we believe in miracles with David Hume. Subscribe, tell your friends about Philosophy Tube. You can also follow us on Twitter and Facebook and leave a like if you... Wilson? Wilson? Wilson! People were very generous with their thoughts in the comments section of our last episode, so let's see what the philosophers had to say about selfishness and morality. Geekstar asked, what would happen if somebody took a bullet for somebody else just impulsively, without really any reasoning, they just did it? Would we say that they're selfish or moral then, or what? Well, that kind of depends on what view you have of morality. Certainly Kant would say that we shouldn't morally praise that person, because if they just did it, then it's kind of like if they just slipped and took the bullet by accident. Also, even if you think that it's about the consequences, the consequences are still pretty much the same. Like, one person still ends up dying no matter what you do. I'd kind of be inclined to say that in that situation, we shouldn't morally praise that person. It's basically just as if they slipped and took the bullet by accident. 
Bob Sabol pointed out that we could actually test Mandeville's theory if there was a person who was raised outside of any kind of society and then brought back in. If they behaved morally, then we would know that morality is to a certain degree innate in us. Yeah, that's a really good idea. I mean, obviously it would be really difficult and immoral to do, but it looks like Mandeville might have a falsifying criterion after all. Speaking of falsifying criteria, Daryl Chu asked whether the existence of God is kind of an empty hypothesis if we don't allow any evidence to count against it. Certainly a lot of philosophers have thought that. John Wisdom and Anthony Flew thought that. Anthony Flew later changed his mind and became a deist. Flew wrote a very, very famous quick paper featuring a story about an invisible gardener which explains what he thinks about that. Daryl, just for you, there is a link to that paper in the description and you can read it for free and I think you'll find it really interesting. Eric Villas said that we have evolved to do things that we think are good for the group and we also have a selfish desire to be praised in there as well. But a selfish person is somebody who puts their desire to be praised above the fact that it's good whenever they do an action. Eric, I think that's a really nice, helpful distinction. I think that's a really good bit of philosophy. So I award you 10 kudos points. That's all we've got time for this week. Thank you very much for watching and I shall see you all in the next episode. Bye!